So the Labour Party are at it again. They are fully divided once again.、Uh, they're coming after the so-called moderate leader Keir Starmer. Why? Because he fired Rebecca Long Bailey from the shadow cabinet. For those who don't know, Rebecca Long Bailey、uh, stood against Keir Starmer to become Labour leader. She lost. She got destroyed, actually. And、uh, she's also Jeremy Corbyn's pet, which means she's so left-wing that every Christmas, instead of having Santa Claus, she has Karl Marx, you know, around the tree and everything. <laughs> so, basically, the reason behind this, and the reason Keir Starmer,、uh, for once, is showing, you know, decisiveness and you know, strong leadership, is because Rebecca Long Bailey slightly crossed the line. She shared an article. <laughs> By Maxine Peek. Now, this woman, she's also very, very left wing. She's very communisty, and she's, you know,、uh, yeah, she thinks Soviet Union did nothing wrong. Now, she also doesn't necessarily like certain people, you know, from the Jewish faith, and you know, she doesn't think they are, they matter. Now. There's a lot of conspiracy theories that she believes in when it comes to、uh, Jewish people and everything. And Rebecca Long Bailey shared an article.、Um, so Keir Starmer, Sakta, the Labour left went absolutely crazy. <laughs> so you can expect、uh, certain people to always be angry, but、um, it, you know the usual suspects. You can guess before I even mention them. First one, Ash Sarka. Yes. Ash, I'm literally a communist. Shar,、uh, Sarka, that, that was close.、Um, so she's、uh, she's not happy. She's saying this is weak and feeble, and Keir Starmer is bad, naughty Keir Starmer. And it's so embarrassing that you're gonna have people like me now defending Keir Starmer. See, this is your fault, Ash. Now, next one. Owen Jones actually tweeted, sacking Rebecca Long Bailey for sharing an interview in the Independent. <laughs> the way he's saying it, as if like Independent is very credible. With one of the one of Britain's most celebrated actors,、uh, because of a sentence uttered by Maxine Peake, which the Independent initially justified with a link to an Amnesty International report, is an absurd overreaction. Yes, Keir,、uh, Keir Starmer, how dare you?、Um, and then we have Michael Walker.、Uh, so Laura Koonsberg said Starmer sacked Rebecca Long Bailey. Michael said. This is stupid, craven, and an incredibly poor indication of what will come next. A pathetic move from Keir Starmer. And Matt Zarb、uh, cousin said, apparently we're now more willing to sack our own front benches than call for the sacking of government front benches. <laughs> Aww, honey. So、uh, all this is happening at the same time. These delusional weirdos. Who have no idea why ordinary working class people abandoned the Labour Party, especially in the last election. This is the latest data we have. So, on the left we have low income voters. On the right we have high income voters. And then on each one of them, the left and right, you have 2017 election and 2019 election. Start with the Conservatives. 2017, 39.7% of low income、uh, voters voted for the Conservative Party. Usually it's lower than Labour, so as you can see, forty point three percent voted for Labour. That's usually the case. And、uh, in twenty nineteen, forty five point four percent of low income voters went blue, and thirty only thirty point six percent decided to vote for the Labour Party. Now that's one issue. I'm actually going to make this bigger so you guys can actually see it properly.、Uh, so on the right hand side, we have high income voters.、Um, In 2017, 43 percent voted Tory. In fact, in 2019, that went down to 40 percent. Where do you think those rich people went to? Well, some of them went to Labour just a bit because they were increased by two points. Well, 0.2, and、uh, the majority went to the Liberal Democrats, your Champagne Socialists.、Uh, but high-income voters,、um, again, Labour is lacking as usual anyway. But still,、um, they actually had more. High-income voters than、uh, low-income voters in the last election. That's embarrassing. So this is the problem with the Labour Party, and they're too busy, you know, celebrating Karl Marx for some reason. This is the problem. That's why you're losing voters. Now, as you know, 
um, every week. It's now Thursday. I was supposed to be doing this about a couple of days ago. But I, I answer questions that we get from the members of the channel. So let's start with the first one. Trevor says, is Boris likely to buckle to surrender uh, to the European Union? Usually you, you would expect the government and politicians to do this. I actually have a feeling I'm more confident when it comes to this government on this issue, on Brexit. Uh, they've been very consistent. I don't think they would. I think there will be some sort of compromises during these negotiations towards the end. Uh, hopefully not too bad, because if it, if it is, we will complain, obviously. Uh, but I don't think they will completely uh, surrender. Tom says, Hi, Maya. I live in Australia. I like following your YouTube work. Question. I think it's time you threw your hat in the ring to become the mayor of London. <laughs> Regards. Uh, okay. Uh, as most of you know, I'm very critical of uh, Sadiq Khan and his track record. Uh, I care about London. Uh, I have a massive problem with the fact that a lot of people who don't live in London, who live outside, uh, over the last few years, uh, have developed this distaste and this kind of distrust uh, with London and Londoners. This disconnect, massive disconnect between London and the rest of the country, and it shouldn't be. This is the capital city of our country. But over the last decade or so, things have changed. And people don't like London. People, people are moving uh, away from London, which is really sad. And uh, all I can say is that I care about this city and I don't like Sadiq Khan. And um, I am coming up with some new ideas when it comes to the next mayoral election. And uh, just stay tuned because things could change. Things could get interesting. That's all I can say. Uh, but thanks for the support. Uh, Sir Chap says, um, Marxism seems to be everywhere. What has the left forgotten about Karl Marx? This is a cliche because it's, it's all about po politics of intention as opposed to outcome. Uh, with, the pe with people on the left, all they care about is intention. When Karl Marx or Marxism they start every idea with the intention, saying whatever we're, gonna, we're about to say is coming from a good place because we care. We like you know, to help. We don't, you know, we don't want to hurt people, you know, well, poor people. And then they actually hurt them at the end. This is why they are always able to hide behind that mask. And this is a big problem for people on the right, let's just say, the economic liberalism or capitalists or conservatives. Because we usually go with outcome and reality and common sense that say, you know, for example, this idea would work, this idea won't work, and capitalism doesn't promise any good intention. It just says this is a free platform, free society, do whatever you want. And this is a big struggle that we have. That's why they will always bring up Karl Marx. Kizzy Powell, do you think the congestion charge in London will push smaller businesses already impacted by the current situation to go out of business? Uh, for the international viewers, the congestion charge in London is a, essentially a city tax for drivers. If you drive into central London, you have to pay. You have it in major cities around the world. Uh, and the Sadiq Khan is now increasing it to £15, seven days a week, and essentially all day until 10pm in the evening. Uh, not only there will be a lot of small businesses that will be impacted, consumers will be impacted. Uh, you have a lot of um, sole traders using their car to travel to get to places and Sadiq Khan is so out of touch he doesn't actually understand this and all he cares about because he bankrupted the transport for London TfL and uh, he's now using that he's using taxpayers money he's using ordinary working class uh, taxpayers money to, uh, to basically raise it on them to fund his bankruptcy that's a big problem and yes smaller businesses will be in trouble but hopefully not for too long, because we are going to get rid of Sadiq Khan. <laughs> Liam says, uh, uh, Hi Maya, I've just started following you on Parler. How much of an impact do you think Parler will have in the UK? It's beginning to draw some big hitters in the unbiased media. I uh, wonder what your thoughts are. So, for those who don't know, Parler is a new Twitter, basically. Um, and it's, it, it's like a right-wing version of Twitter. And that's the issue I have with it, because... Some people say uh, Twitter is biased, so we should go to a, a platform. I'm, I'm actually on Parler because I'm checking it out and see how it is. Uh, but for those who say Twitter is biased towards the left, so we need something unbiased, well, something like Parler, which is great, it's competition, I'm all, for, uh, all uh, uh, pro it, but it's not um, unbiased. It's also biased towards the right. As I am worried about creating an echo chamber. Uh, just because we agree with each other, 
doesn't mean that you know we are unbiased. Everybody has bias, and uh, you know at least we are talking about common sense. It has great potential. I'm supporting it for now, and uh, there are some big names that are joining. I don't know how big it's going to get, but it is getting bigger than all the other alternatives we've had in the past. Uh, Capilan says. Will the government start the no deal preparation this, this month if there's no trade deal? So the good thing is the government had actually started this months ago. Most of their preparations for no deal or WCO is actually already in place. So it's just like the last few bits that has to be done, which will probably start around October. Now, Mark says, Hey Maya, what's taking schools so long to get going again? The trade unions. This is the first time that the, the teaching unions are winning against the government in this sense because politically and culturally in this country, in the UK, we always say p politicians do not go up against the nursing unions or basically health professionals. You would lose because people love the NHS and teachers always lose. The teaching unions, essentially, not teachers. Teaching unions have always uh, lost. Not this time. They have the upper hand and that's a big problem. We need to get schools going again, especially in September, now that we're losing the summer. Uh, and apparently they don't want to go back in September either. So that's a big problem. Chris says, I love, as a veteran and a person with mental health issues, I am getting an incredible amount of support from the German healthcare system. I uh, see and hear of the lack of care of the, uh, that the NHS are able to provide for people like me, which makes me grateful uh, that, uh, and lucky uh, that I chose to stay in Germany at the end of my service. I cringe when I hear British politicians talk about preserving the NHS. The system clearly doesn't work and should be given a mercy. Well, yeah. uh, there's too much scaremongering about the alternative, which is the, they think is the US uh, health insurance system as a replacement. Uh, the question is, is it possible that the NHS is uh, funding a scare tactic to keep the status quo? This is a, yeah, I mean, this propaganda has been going on for decades in the UK. A lot of people in Britain have no idea what's happening outside. They think it's either the NHS or a, like an unregulated insurance-based system, you know, and some people say America or whatever. Uh, firstly, the US healthcare system when it comes to outcome, the quality is amazing. They're, they're obviously, they have, they have massive issues, but again, it's because the government is so involved in it in a weird way. Uh, look at the rest of Europe. Look at Scandinavia. Look at Germany. Look at Singapore. Um, it works. But the moment you mention this, people think, well, so what are the top things about the NHS? It's free. Well, someone has to pay for it. You're paying for it already, but it's free at the point of use. And uh, it's, you know, it's universal. So you think if you get rid of the NHS, that goes away. No, it won't. Because, you know, all these other systems are also universal and uh, they have a safety net. If you can't afford it, you know, you, you don't pay. The government pays for it. Um, so... When we say the NHS doesn't work, we say the NHS is bad because it's run centrally. It's the way it's operated that's a problem. Uh, I'm more than happy to discuss the funding. Uh, but the, the, you can't get bureaucrats and politicians to run healthcare. Nobody in the world does this. We are the only country that does this. And it's terrible. So, <laughs> um, let's see what else we have. Uh, last, uh, okay, two more questions. Mandy says, do you think the government will cave and reduce our food standard regulations in order to strike a trade deal with America? No, there's no need to do that. There's, um, it's scaremongering, it's protectionist, it's idiotic. Uh, free trade is free trade. We don't have to change our standards. Um, with free trade, if you have a product coming from America, for example, it will be labeled American, you know, American chicken. Because this whole debate is about chicken for some reason. Uh, coronated chicken. Even though vegetables and water coronated in, in, in Europe and in this country uh, and I've had chicken in America and I'm still alive so it will be labeled that's the whole point of free trade and free markets um, com other companies and producers who do chicken in this country and farmers they don't have to bring down their standards uh, so the UK standards will remain the same uh, Stephen says hi Maya just had my defund the BBC t-shirt delivered ah that's a good reminder Yes, thank you, Stephen, for reminding me. Uh, yes, uh, if you don't know, we have our new merch, Defund the BBC, cancelling your TV license and watching this channel instead. Uh, make sure to check out the link in the description. Order your T-shirts soon. Uh, I think this campaign will only go until probably a couple of more weeks, probably end of 
June, I don't know, I'll let you guys know, but this, this will be limited, basically. So make sure to get your t-shirts as soon as possible. And if you enjoy the content, then don't forget to subscribe, obviously, as usual. Uh, make sure to stay up to date. We have a daily show at 5.45 p.m. and then another one at 8 p.m. I'm TC. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.